Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries coming from the James Webb Space Telescope once again. And for the first time in a few months, we now have even more possible galactic candidates fighting for the record of the farthest galaxy we've ever discovered. In other words, in this recent study we're going to be discussing today, researchers potentially discovered five more galactic candidates that seem to have formed extremely early on. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and talk about the potential ramifications when it comes to the modern theories, but let's also start with certain misconceptions when it comes to galactic distances. So the thing is, ever since James Webb became operational, there's actually been a lot of potential discoveries and a lot of potential candidates at extremely faraway distances. Here this distance is expressed in redshifts, which represents by how much the light from this galaxy is redshifted due to the expansion of the universe. And while early on there were quite a lot of candidates, with some as far away as the redshift of 16 or even 18, but when all of this started, so this was back in 2022, the farthest confirmed candidate we had was GN Z11. The galaxy you can learn about in one of the videos in the description that was definitively confirmed to be at a redshift of 11. This is approximately 32 billion light years away from us, or in more comprehensible terms, when the universe was about 400 million years old following the Big Bang. But then within just two years there were so many new candidates, with over 700 discovered in just a few months. And though at first a lot of researchers were super excited, one by one a lot of these candidates turned out to be actually much much closer with initial calculations just being not correct. Although here let's talk about why they were incorrect and how this usually works. So normally when trying to discover new galaxies, researchers point different telescopes at a certain spot and try to capture as much light as possible. And in some cases they'll be able to capture extremely redshifted light from a lot of distant sources. But in order to confirm distances to these objects, especially because in this case this is just a preliminary discovery, scientists use at least two separate techniques. The first one is referred to as the Lyman Brake technique, or basically they look for what's known as the Lyman Brake galaxy. At these faraway distances we actually assume this to be way before reionization period and so the entire universe back then was covered in neutral hydrogen. And at those distances a lot of neutral hydrogen would absorb anything in higher frequency, only allowing lower frequencies of light to pass through. And so for a typical faraway galaxy, the spectrum of light would look something like this. There would basically be a sudden drop off, only visible in certain filters. And so by measuring the redshift of this alignment break, it becomes possible to determine the approximate distance to the galaxy. Although here the keyword is approximate. This is not a super accurate technique. With the second technique that usually goes hand in hand being known as photometry. And this is basically where you capture the same image in different filters just to see which frequencies get through. And so for example for this recent study, this is roughly what all of these filters resembled when looking at the same galaxy in different frequencies of light. And so here as you can see, it's actually invisible in a lot of frequencies, but does become visible at certain point. And so this in some sense represents this Lyman break. And so basically by comparing when the light from this galaxy disappears and looking at the redshift when this happens, researchers can then work out the approximate distance. But unfortunately this only gives us a preliminary result. You can actually think of this as a kind of a rough calculation when it comes to galactic distances. So basically this is a way to identify if these galaxies are far or much closer. But in order to discover the exact distance, something else needs to be done and something that's a little bit more complicated. That something is usually referred to as spectroscopic analysis. And this basically involves a detailed breakdown of light into individual wavelengths in order to then discover known frequencies of light from various molecules and from various atoms we're familiar with. And so here by discovering certain molecules, which usually will have extremely specific frequency, it then becomes possible to determine the distance super precise, which by itself is great, but is also a much more expensive and a much longer technique compared to photometry and compared to rough measurements. And so only a handful of galaxies so far have been confirmed using this method, with the galaxy right here that we discussed previously, and this was in early 2024, officially confirmed to be the distance record holder. But nothing over redshift of 14 so far has been confirmed. Here this redshift corresponds to the universe when it was only 290 million years old, or approximately 110 million years younger than the previous record holder GNZ11. And though even from previous research there are still some candidates left that could be pretty far as well, anything that was considered to be farther than this 
so far has been proven to be incorrect through this much more thorough spectroscopic analysis. So previously, as of November of 2024, the galaxy you see right here was basically a record holder. But in this new study, by Kokorev and his team, researchers did discover something completely unexpected by using this beautiful cluster known as a Bell S1063, a really massive galactic cluster that contains a lot of mass and a lot of dark matter that basically creates an extremely powerful cosmic lens. And this is of course how this phenomenon works. We have a really massive object between us and the target, and this massive object lenses the light so much that it magnifies faraway objects up to several thousand times. And so inside of this lens, researchers discovered several unusual galaxies that all seem to be located in the same area, but also all extremely dim. But more importantly, all of them were at a pattern redshift of over 15.9 up to about 18.6. And that farthest galaxy with the redshift of 18.6, if confirmed, would basically exist when the universe was only 200 million years old, basically beating the earliest galaxy, JHGS Z14, by approximately 90 million years. But apart from just seeing these galaxies, there were some additional surprises. First of all, they seem to be in a relatively similar region, suggesting that there actually could be so many more that we're not seeing, and also suggesting that they basically all started around the same time. And more importantly, when looking at the density of galaxies in this region, there basically seems to be a small tension with previous assumptions and previous predictions compared to what we're seeing. So basically here the discovery suggests that there seems to be way more galaxies, very very tiny, very dim galaxies, but all present in a relatively similar volume of space. And they all seem to be super super young, almost entirely dust free, and obviously contain very young star population. But when combining this result with previous results from additional surveys, it also becomes apparent that at certain point, the number of galaxies drops dramatically. And so one of the conclusions from the study is that at a redshift of 17, or when the universe was 230 million years old, there seems to be a sudden and dramatic drop in bright ultraviolet emitters, suggesting that up to this point there were not a lot of galaxies, and then very suddenly they all appeared all at once. And essentially confirming something we've discussed relatively recently in one of the previous videos, that suggests that for some reason in the early universe, the star formation was much more efficient compared to the universe today. In other words, many of these galaxies suddenly appeared and became super bright and were producing a lot of stars very quickly, for reasons we still don't understand. And more importantly, if this discovery is confirmed, it actually also explains why so many of these bright galaxies were discovered at much closer distances, with a redshift of 10 to 14, because in some sense we're just seeing the progenitors that grew really really fast and became super bright very quickly. But at a redshift of 19, there seems to be nothing. Essentially suggesting that some of the first galaxies potentially appeared 200 million years after the Big Bang. And intriguingly, all of these discoveries basically violate nothing. All of the cosmological frameworks seem to directly agree with these discoveries and potentially even explain some of the more unusual recent observations when it comes to galactic formation. But there is a very important side note that goes back to what I just mentioned about photometry and spectroscopy. At the moment, these discoveries were just made using photometry and the Lyman break and not a more detailed spectroscopic analysis. However, in this study, researchers did actually model spectroscopy and compared it to some of the previous confirmed discoveries, which did help them to come up with a more accurate data. And so in some sense, these galaxies could be some of the farthest discovered, but until spectroscopy, we're not going to know much more. But if these galaxies are as far as they seem, there is of course a really important question. What's making them produce so many stars so quickly, and how did all of this start? Right now, the current explanations basically suggest one of three things. Maybe this is a result of some kind of a black hole feedback, and we know that a lot of giant black holes already existed back then. Maybe this is a result of some kind of a supernova explosion feedback, or a result of dark matter and dark energy, bringing a lot of matter together, causing super quick star formation and the quick development of these galaxies. And so the new mystery is, why did stars form so differently and so much quicker, in the first billion years when the universe was born. Which is of course entirely different from previous assumptions and previous simulations, including the recent release of the Frontier E simulation, which basically represents the largest and the most complex simulation of the universe ever created, which seem to create galaxies and seem to create stars in a slightly different manner. In other words, there's a bit of a disconnect between the reality and what we're observing 
compared to simulations. But we'll discuss this simulation and some of the discoveries here in a separate video. So you know, subscribe and stuff. But in essence, for now at least, that's it. Researchers discovered new, even farther galaxies, but we don't really exactly know how far they are until future spectroscopic studies. But if confirmed, because so many of these galaxies seem to be in the same location, and because they seem to be extremely prolific at forming stars, yet are actually all really small in size, this could potentially lead us to new explanations in regards to the formation of galaxies. And so until future discoveries, thank you for watching, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.